Hey, welcome guys. In this video, we're doing a review of the Dell Latitude E7470. Now, this is a successor to the E7440 and E7450, although I'm not sure why Dell decided to skip out on the E7460 naming moniker. It's kind of strange, but it is what it is. Now, if you go on the Dell website, you can actually configure some of the specs. My particular model is a dual core i5 processor clocked at 2.4 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM, a 256 gig SSD, a 1080p non-touch display, a four cell battery, and this particular build will round you up to a whopping ridiculous $3,039 Canadian. Yes, you heard me correctly. Now this huge price tag does include a three year warranty, which basically includes a Dell technician coming on site the next day if you have any type of hardware related issues. But man oh man, that is a really hefty price tag basically making this laptop towards business professionals and, well, businesses in general. Now the power cable does include this neat little cable management clip, and its entirety, when measured at its full length, the power cord is measuring about 9 feet. And if you wrap the cord around the charging bar with that cable management clip that I showed you guys earlier, it makes it really compact, which is great considering that this is an Ultrabook laptop it comes with, making it a great accessory for travel. With measurements of 13 by 9 by 9.13 by 0.76 inches, and weighing in at a really light 3.32 pounds, it's easy to see why this is classified as an ultrabook. Now this line of laptops is catered towards business professionals or businesses in general, but yeah, technically you can use it for personal use, it's just that price tag might actually throw you off though. For its exterior appearance, this is a rather attractive design with a nice cool black matte finish. It looks kind of similar to the E7440, but just a black version, but it looks almost identical to the E7450. Now the exterior finish is where most of the appeal kind of ends. You see, when you open the laptop, you start typing on the keyboard, you got a nice backlit keyboard, which is pretty nice to have as well. However, I noticed that the wrist pads, even if you haven't eaten any food, if you haven't been sweating, it's just a hot day, it gets really smudgy easily. Now in this video, I've actually cleaned up the smudges a lot but you can still kind of see in some light reflection that is some smudges left, which is rather disappointing and kind of bizarre that the previous 7440 and 7450 didn't have this problem. Now going over the sides and available ports, on the bottom there's a hefty amount of ventilation ports available, which is always nice to have. And of course near the top of what I'm displaying right now, you'll notice that there's actually kind of a connection that's actually designed for the Dell docking station. Over on the front, on the far right of the laptop, you'll notice a kind of a blinking light, which is the power indicator. Next to that is the SSD indicator. It notifies you if it's kind of processing any type of work. And next to that is the battery indicator. Now switching gears over to the left side of the machine is where you have the, another ventilation section, but this one is designed for ventilation for the fan itself. And just next to that, over on the left, is a cable security slot. Over on the back, starting on the left, we have an Ethernet port. Just next to that, we have an HDMI, then Mini Display port, port, two USB 3.0 ports, and the power connector port. And over on the right side of the laptop, starting from the left, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, SD card reader slot, another USB 3.0 port, making it the third one, and a SIM card tray for mobile data connectivity. Now inside the laptop, which you guys can't see, is that it's housing an 802.11 dual band AC adapter. Now there's also an option available to upgrade that to a tri-band adapter. It also supports Bluetooth 4.1, and yes, you do have the option to include an additional Y-Gig adapter, which basically allows you to connect to, say, a Y-Gig wireless docking station. Yep, that's right, you heard me, a wireless docking station. I do have a review on that video. You can find a link to it in the video description. Now, for my particular version, which is 1080p, the screen clarity is pretty decent. It's not the best 1080p screen I've seen on a laptop. I've certainly seen better, but that doesn't mean this one is horrible. Now going over the color pop, it's somewhat decent, again I've seen better. The brightness output level isn't the greatest. On its maximum, it seems to be like maybe three quarters of my MacBook Air for example, so I wish the screen could get brighter, especially when you're using it outdoors. Although fortunately on the non-touch version, the screen isn't too glossy, so there shouldn't be a lot of light reflection. One thing I have to mention though is that viewing angles are surprisingly pretty good. They're not that bad actually. One strange characteristic about the physical design is that you'll notice there's no indentation to kind of put your finger in to open the screen. Sometimes I have to kind of pry with both hands to open up the screen, which is rather annoying. Still on the subject about opening the screen, one thing I have to mention is that the balance ratio between the screen and the rest of the body itself is pretty terrible. In order to open the screen, you kind of have to use both hands, one hand to open the screen and the other one to hold the body down. I wish that the balance ratio was a lot better where you can just kind of open it up with ease, like say the MacBook Air. 
However, one thing I have to note is that the flex of the screen in which it can go back is just a little bit beyond 180 degrees. Despite how thin the screen is, I have to mention I'm quite impressed that it's non-flex capability, which basically means it won't flex that easily. It's pretty sturdy. Oh, so the camera quality you're seeing is actually taken from the front-facing web camera available on this laptop. Now there's absolutely no information anywhere on the Dell site as to what type of quality it can achieve in terms of video recording, but from within Windows it seems to be capped at 720p. Even then, at 720p it's incredibly grainy, um, you're seeing a lot of noise in the picture around here even though it's a really bright sunny day. Um, so it's kind of what you expect for a webcam, but considering this price point, I would expect it is something a lot sharper. It's, it's a little bit disappointing. It's just barely enough to get by for video conferencing. So what I'm going to do at this point is give you guys a sound demonstration. I have the laptop volume maxed out. I'm playing a YouTube video for my YouTube channel, and it also has the YouTube volume maxed out. Keep in note that the speakers are at the front bottom, so it isn't exactly the best spot to play speakers. So let's just take a quick listen as to his performance. It accomplishes is through magnets. There are little screws on each side of the clip and the magnets are on the mouse itself. It's kind of an ingenious design and they don't fall off that easily. So as you can tell, the volume output isn't exactly the greatest. I was expecting something a little bit better at this huge price point. I'm pleased to say that the keys have a decent amount of spacing between them and the travel time is nice, making it a pretty comfortable experience to type on the keyboard. And when typing on this laptop on say on a desk, the palm rest area is pretty adequate. It feels rather comfortable when typing. And because the laptop is an ultrabook, the bottom space isn't too high, so my wrists feel very comfortable just resting on the laptop. Since this is an ultrabook, I was expecting a quieter keyboard to type on. It's not a big deal, but just take a listen for yourself. It's not that quiet. Using the trackpad and the built-in keyboard is nothing special, it's just an okay experience. Using the trackpad is for two finger scrolling up and down the web pages isn't exactly that smooth. It seems to just kind of skip too fast sometimes if you suddenly jerk it. I've had much better experiences on different laptops. So you guys already know what type of specs I have in my particular build, but basically the options include an i5 processor and an i7 processor, both dual core. The i5 version supports 3 megabytes of cache, whereas the i7 supports 4 megabytes of cache. And this is using the Intel 6300 series of chipset, which actually doesn't sound that great for tech enthusiasts, but that's not what this laptop is really designed for. My particular model has 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM clocked at 2133 megahertz. Although you have the option to upgrade that to 16 gigs of RAM. Now, SSD size capacities ranges from 128 gigs all the way up to 512. All versions do use the new SSD type, which is M.2. Now, I'm not really a fan of benchmarking scores, and especially considering a machine like this, which is not designed for gaming, it's even more useless. I believe more in real world usage. Now, watching 4K videos, using Office, etc., day to day use basically, it'll be outstanding, especially when it comes to 4K media. Sure, no problem, you can watch a few of them at the same time if you really, for some reason, had to. Now, when it comes to gaming, you're stuck with using Intel integrated graphics. Now on this particular segment, it might look pretty decent because the screen is a little bit further away from the camera, but believe me in person, it's not that great. You're using integrated Intel graphics, the screen is a little bit blurry, the graphics aren't that fantastic looking, and of course there is some stutter, so this is not a gaming machine. Available battery options come in 3 cell or 4 cell options. Now my particular model actually has the 4 cell option. Basically with my testing I was able to average 6 hours of non-stop YouTube usage, which is basically using the screen, the speakers, the Wi-Fi adapter, so it's pulling a lot of bandwidth. And you know, over 6 hours it performed pretty well. I went down to about from 100% to close to 7%. And it takes me about 2 hours to fully charge the battery. Out of the box, as you would expect, you're getting Windows 10. And during those battery tests, which I've been averaging about well, 6 hours with media playback, the laptop didn't get too hot, but it did get rather warm, which is kind of expected. And in terms of the noise, well, it was really quiet, as you would expect from Ultrabook. Rarely did the fan ever have to push hard, and even when it did, it wasn't too noisy. I'm really glad to say that repairability is pretty good on this machine. Accessing the RAM, the SSD, for example, the fan, well, it's pretty awesome. Once you take the back plate off, you're pretty much set to go. It's not too complicated inside. Although, another bizarre physical design is that you're noticing that I can't take the screw out. Despite my screwdriver being magnetic, I noticed something really strange about the threading. You see, when you start to unscrew a screw from the threading, it's taking it out of the motherboard. Then it, there's a gap between the motherboard and the back plate. So when you reach that gap, you can't really unscrew. You're gonna have to take your nails or, you know, another 
screwdriver bit and kind of lift it up and then you start unscrewing from the thread of the back plate. But there's one thing I wanted to discuss, is the price tag. This is the big problem for this laptop and that's why I didn't get a much higher score, despite it performing pretty decent. It's a pretty nice laptop, it's pretty light, thin, you know, it doesn't get too hot, it doesn't make too much noise from the fan. Overall, it's a decent machine, but the price is just killing it. Now, this is considered as a work laptop, so you can actually argue that, well, this is for companies, this is for business use. Well, what is work classified to Dell? I mean, is it a company that has a thousand employees or more, or 500? If you have an organization with 20 employees, can you really justify people buying your employees a $3,000 laptop that you could buy somewhere else for maybe, say, less than half the cost? So $3,000 plus tax, you know, the warranty is stuck inside, well what if you don't want it? You know, what if you're tech savvy and you run a business or your co-worker's an IT guy and he can just fix it for you because repairability is not bad on this laptop, so, you know, having the warranty stuck in that price is kind of unfair, you know, if you have a smaller business. But let's say, you know, the warranty cost is there because having a technician come on site, you know, for three years is awesome, that's a great service, but let's say that service costs a thousand bucks, or the price tag. Well, that means this machine still costs two thousand dollars? That doesn't make much sense. Now, unfortunately, I can't really recommend this for personal use. You know, I really can't justify that huge price tag of that warranty. You're honestly better off buying a thousand dollar laptop with the full five-year warranty from somewhere else that might offer a similar service if you're running a small organization or if you're looking for an ultrabook for personal use. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Plus, Twitter, Instagram links, as well as that wireless docking station review, which I have a link to it of that review in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.